Greetings, it's Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher. Thanks for checking out this video today. A question I get asked so often from people uh, is, Eric, what is brain fog? Why have I got brain fog? I feel spaced out. I feel stoned. I feel drunk. There's something not right up here. I just feel out of it at sorts. What do you think it is? Why do I feel like this? Nobody can help me. Can you cure it? Doctors think I'm nuts. I've been sent to a psychiatrist. I mean, I've heard thousands of, you know, reasons or explanations about brain fog and, 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 and just as many so-called solutions of what people should do when they feel like this, okay? So if you have brain fog uh, or you can relate to the term brain fog, I think this is going to be quite an interesting video for you because I'm going to cover a few different things here. So sit back and relax and just pay some careful attention to some of the points I've got to make, all right? Because some of it may relate to you, some of it may not relate to you. You may find some of it very interesting, some you will know, some you won't know. So brain fog is very challenging for somebody like me. It's something we see quite often in the clinic if we're naturopaths. Uh, doctors will see it, chiropractors will see it, naturopaths will see it. Many people will hear reports of patients experience brain fog. So what is brain fog? What does it mean? What causes brain fog? Let's just sort of analyze that term a little bit. Brain fog is really a feeling of mental apathy, mental confusion, not feeling quite with it. Some people tell me they feel like they're drunk. Other people will say to me things like, I just can't think clearly anymore. You know, it's almost like there's cotton wool up there. And um, everyone's got their own take on what causes brain, to brain fog and also, you know, the particular presenting signs and symptoms. So there are a huge amount of potential causes of brain fog. We can't just basically say, well, uh, bowel toxins create brain fog or um, copper toxicity creates it or adrenal fatigue creates it. So there are just as many causes uh, of this condition uh, as there are variants of brain fog. So let's look at some of the, the causes I would commonly see in the clinic. So some people say basically that mineral imbalances can cause brain fog. And we know that copper toxicity can do this, particularly when it's unopposed with zinc. So some people have higher levels of copper than they should, and that can create a lot of problems neurologically for people on many different levels. So copper can interfere with iron and with many other different minerals in the body. So the hair analysis will sometimes pick up with accuracy if you've got a copper and zinc imbalance. Heavy metals uh, are implicated often in brain fog, particularly mercury. Don't immediately jump on the bandwagon and think, I've got amalgam fillings and need removing. Many people with amalgam fillings don't have amalgam mercury toxicity. Sounds crazy saying that, but after dealing with patients for nearly 30 years, I can tell you that a large amount of people I see with amalgam fillings are not sick or dying from amalgam fillings. They will have some level of toxicity, but you can't uh, categorically state that every single person with an amalgam filling is going to die of mercury toxicity. That's a ridiculous statement. But some people with amalgam filling certainly do um, develop major toxicity and brain fog as a consequence of this. I see many patients with lead toxicity, cadmium, arsenic. These are common sulfhydryl metals, we call them, uh, these particular four, which we find very commonly in people. Aluminum, I think you Americans call it aluminum, we call it aluminium, uh, is another element which is very abundant in the Earth's crust and is often implicated with Alzheimer's disease, for example. Uh, aluminium certainly is a real concern of me with a lot of people. You know, aluminum foil, for example, people still use aluminum foil for cooking, uh, and aluminum is used in a lot of different household products. So you want to be careful. If you're concerned about heavy metals, get a check. Get a hair analysis will often give you a good indication, particularly a pubic hair analysis. One of the most common causes of, of brain fog I see is bowel toxicity. Small intestinal bowel overgrowth, or SIBO, uh, is very common. So there are many different gases produced as a consequence of poor digestion and fermentation in the bowel. You know, chemicals like indoles and skatols and cadaverine, and these can make you feel quite sick and spaced out. Uh, if you've got a lot of gas and bloating, and get, get nausea from time to time and have weird bowel motions and have brain fog, it's almost a surefire sign that there's a big connection between the poor gut function and the mental confusion that you're experiencing. I've given up counting how many patients I see uh, with brain fog with poor gut function, and I almost see it as synonymous. I don't find many people with brain fog who have got normal or very well-functioning digestive system. 
So to me, it's one of the key things that you need to do if you've got brain fog is to get the gut fixed up, okay? You need to really look at the, at the level of beneficial bacteria that you've got. What type of bad bacteria have you got? What imbalanced flora have you got? What type of candida levels have you got? Now, some people uh, like uh, Lisa Richards from the Candida Diet, for example, say the stool testing is not an accurate way to gauge uh, candida. Uh, you're better off doing it through uh, blood-based antibody testing. Well, that's a load of crap. I'm sorry, I don't buy into that. Stool testing is the best way to determine, in my opinion, whether you've got a candida in your body, whether it's systemically or in the gut, because stool testing will give you dozens of different markers which can not only show candida, but what kind of immunological balances you've got in the gut, what kind of inflammatory balances you've got. It gives you a massive amount of information. It's the best bang for your buck. Are three stool samples on three concurrent days. They also do a, they, they try and culture the stool for yeast. They can microscopically see if there's any dead yeast coming out. They can identify different species of candida, unlike the antibody test. It's a far more accurate analysis. Plus we can see what kind of level of beneficial bacteria that you've got. Now, many patients I see with brain fog have got very poor levels of beneficial bacteria. They take all the probiotics in the world, every single brand. They take 3 lac, they take 5 lac, they take you know, Sintol, they take every product, and nothing bloody works. What's going on here? Why can't we raise the level of beneficial bacteria? Well, there's a lot of tricks uh, when it comes to uh, probiotics. There's a lot of crappy information out there about probiotics. I'm going to explain this in subsequent videos, a lot more about my experiences on using various kinds of probiotics and enzymes with candida and SIBO with people. So you're going to learn a lot out of those subsequent videos. But suffice to say, nearly all patients with brain fog have got a gut problem that needs fixing up. You don't need to spend two, three hundred bucks on a stool test in every case. Sometimes it's just a matter of following the right kind of diet and taking an antifungal product. Uh, antifungal antibacterial will often have a fantastic result uh, on determining whether you're going to get an improvement or not by altering the gut function. If you start noticing brain fog lifts a little bit with a good antifungal, uh, it's time to really start working on the gut and improving it. For that reason, I created an antifungal called Canzida. Canzida.com is the website to get this antifungal. Uh, I developed this after a lot, a lot of uh, uh, trial and error and using every product on the market. You don't need to take this, but you, you're really going to determine pretty quickly if SIBO um, has its origin in, uh, if sorry, if brain fog, here I am with brain fog now, if brain fog is related to poor bacteria or candida yeast infection, which it commonly is. They're often bedfellows, you'll often find them together. So there are other causes of SIBO as well, of course. I mean, adrenal fatigue, poor cortisol levels, low cortisol levels, uh, play a huge role in poor brain function. Cortisol is required uh, to liberate stored glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis. So when we've got sufficient cortisol in the bloodstream at the right time, we can release sufficient stored glucose that can be converted to you know, blood sugar, because the brain primarily uses glucose as a fuel source. So if we take fuel away from the brain, it's going to go foggy and all weird and you know spacey, so many people with brain fog, in fact, experience hypoglycemia or poor blood sugar levels. They can also get irritable and cranky. They can get mood swings. These things can happen you know, quite commonly. So getting your sal salivary cortisol levels checked is sometimes of, of a huge advantage with brain fog if you've tried everything else. Poor thyroid function. Okay, you can have very high or very low TSH, thyroid stimulating levels. I see this quite commonly with brain fog. Altered thyroid function, altered brain function. We know that the thyroid plays a very key role in optical health, in brain health, in cognition. I mean, if you look back in the old days, you know, um, if you look at the word cretinism or cretins or, or lunacy, people with poor IQ levels commonly had uh, goiter or, or low thyroid function. So we see that quite a lot. So that's another avenue that may need exploring. Are you chewing chewing gum with aspartame in it? Are you drinking Diet Coke or doing dumb things like that? So these sorts of neurotoxins create brain fog. So make sure you're not using these poisons in your diet. Fluoride can be implicated in brain fog. Yeah? All these sorts of chemicals, organochlorines, organophosphates, carbamates, herbicides, medicides, pesticides, all these sorts of chemicals um, can affect neurological function to a marked degree. There's certain specialized testing I sometimes perform on patients. I had a very interesting case here in New Zealand of a guy who 
uh, release this uh, this toxin in his lounge room to get rid of bugs. And as a result, he developed severe neurological damage. And when we did some advanced urine testing, we found that the brain fog was a consequence from uh, insecticide poisoning. Uh, fortunately, in his case, it's irreversible. So, you know, sometimes you need to be a little bit of a detective, a troubleshooter to find the origin of brain fog. But I can tell you, I think the secret to curing brain fog is getting the gut function right, is getting the liver function right, is improving the toxicity level of the body, clearing toxins, getting rid of constipation, getting rid of poisons out of your life, improving the quality of your food, reducing stress levels, improving the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, you know, getting rid of uh, hypothyroidism, balancing if you've got hyper, you know, increasing if you've got hypothyroidism, and particularly fixing up adrenal fatigue, which often underpins you know, a lot of neurological dysfunction in people. So I know it's a lot of information to dump on you in, in, a, in a video, but these are some things I want you to think about when it comes to brain fog. I've never met a patient yet that can't get a significant improvement in brain fog. I found patients who can't cure brain fog but they're quite limited. Most people I see with brain fog, when it's severe, and they've had it for many years, can get it to a point where it's bad and they can live with it. And most patients who've had it bad for many years can get rid of their brain fog entirely. There are a percentage, as I mentioned, that we can't seem to help. Uh, maybe it's because they can't help themselves or we haven't really found the root cause of their problem. But believe me, you can get rid of brain fog in most cases. So don't let your practitioner talk you out of it. Uh, you know, thinking that you're actually nuts in the head or you've got some psychological problem when there could well be something underpinning. Never underestimate the connection between the gut, the brain, you know, uh, you know the moods, the cognition, because they're very real. And one day in medicine, we will not be treating people up here anymore when they've got problems. We'll be treating people here in the gut. All right? So I hope this was an enlightening video for you today. For more information, uh, you'll be able to read uh, on yeastinfection.org ericbacker.com and try my antifungal out, okay? Kanzida.com and it's with an X, C-A-N-X-I-D-A, all right? Make sure you also do the yeast infection quiz which I've created. You'll find that at candidacrusher.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you.